So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here again. And uh, today we'll have another look at an interesting specimen. Uh, this one here is uh, the larva of a midge. A midge uh, is a fly. And specifically today I'd like uh, to look at its feet. Yeah, there are tiny little feet here. And uh, those feet are quite interesting because there are many little hair on it. And those hair allow the midge to actually also crawl and uh, to move forward on a very smooth surface uh, such um, as, uh, um, as as a microscope slide. Yeah, uh, the adventure has uh, so often started out uh, in a garden here and uh, where there is a garden often there is also a place uh, with uh, rainwater because uh, of course you want to water the plants and this standing water is of course a good place uh, not uh, only for algae uh, to reproduce uh, but of course also for a variety of uh, insect larvae. So I simply took along um, my plastic container and I collected a water sample and I simply took it home and uh, put it uh, under the microscope. Yeah, and uh, it didn't uh, take uh, very long. This is what I found. Uh, of course, uh, many algae, a few rotifers as well. But uh, most interestingly was this larva here. And uh, already a few weeks ago, I made a video of uh, mosquito larvae. Um, but this one here um, yeah, seems to be uh, the larva of a non-biting midge. Um, at least uh, this is what uh, uh, some internet research and my identification book uh, told me. I did even find uh, a picture online. Now, I don't know if it's exactly the same uh, species here, but uh, that's uh, the yeah an example um, of one of those a group of, uh, of insects uh, where it belongs to. Now, um, when I looked at it, uh, immediately I was able to see that uh, there are blood vessels beneath uh, the surface of the body, quite uh, quite nicely visible here. And as it uh, kind of moved along, I was able to uh, see also that uh, there were tiny little feet. Um, and here you can see it uh, quite well. And those tiny little feet, they were kind of uh, moving along in unison, uh, pushing <laughs> the larva along on the smooth slide. And um, even on the backside, um, towards the tail and there are also two other feet. Now I was kind of wondering, well, how is this possible that uh, those uh, feet are able to um, form such a good grip uh, on the smooth uh, glass uh, slide? Because after all, uh, tardigrades, um, basically they have a big problem moving along and they slip uh, quite a lot and they stay put on one place on the slide because they can't move forward. <laughs> but it's quite different here. Um, and uh, I had, of course, therefore a closer look. And this is where I saw that uh, the feet have a lot of uh, tiny little hair. Uh, on them and I think that this significantly increases the surface area of uh, the feet and uh, this kind of reminded me a little bit uh, of the feet of a gecko um, because geckos are able also to move up uh, vertical uh, surfaces like for example walls and for many years scientists were kind of wondering how is it possible that they are able uh, to uh, crawl up uh, yeah, even smooth surfaces they don't have suction cups um, or they don't have a sticky slime layer or anything like that. But then uh, after a little bit of research, uh, they discovered that these are the so-called the Van der Waals forces uh, that allow um, the gecko uh, to move up uh, the wall. Van der Waal forces are very weak interactions between um, between atoms. And I think maybe, maybe it's a, it's a working hypothesis. Maybe we have a similar phenomenon here as well because uh, those here are so small and so tiny that there's a large surface area and uh, this maybe um, allows the feet of, of the larva to make very good contact with uh, the smooth uh, glass slide. Yeah, here we see it uh, quite nicely again, those tiny little hair. I mean, yeah, it looks like uh, they have tiny hooks on them, but really there is nothing to cling to um, on a smooth glass slide. Yeah, so basically um, I uh, observed the mage now for a couple of minutes here. We can also see how it pushes itself along. Um, and uh, I think it's doing this uh, uh, quite uh, quite effectively. And, and also at the same time, look at the mouth parts <laughs> trying to yeah, gather food. I wonder what it's feeding on. Yeah. But in any case, uh, it kind of shows that um, if you kind of really increase the magnification quite a bit, I think this must be now using my 60 times, times objective, um, then you're really able to see quite a lot of the details. Um, those oval things that you see um, in, in the center, those uh, oval green structures, these um, are algae, that, which were part of the water sample as well. So you can actually see a little bit of a size comparison here that those uh, here 
um, on the feet are significantly thinner than the individual cells. Yeah, so quite uh, quite fascinating to see and hear yet uh, yet another one over here. I need to focus uh, always a little bit, otherwise I'm not able to get all layers uh, sharp and clear. Well, I hope it was interesting for you. At this time, I'd like to also advertise my other YouTube channels. I recently started a, a live streaming channel as well, uh, where I spend a little bit more time explaining you things. Uh, I put the links into the description. Um, yeah, and of course you can um, also visit that channel and uh, you'll get a little bit more insight uh, into some of uh, the laboratory techniques and microscopy techniques uh, that I'm, I'm doing. Well, uh, but for today, that's all I wanted to share with you. Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting as always. And, and see you around next time. Bye-bye.